Good afternoon and welcome to the New York Charter School Association monthly statewide webinar. I'm Yomika Bennett, the Executive Director of the New York Charter School Association. I'm joined today by Anna Hall, CEO, Northeast Charter Schools Network, Janet Klein, Associate in Education Research in the Charter Schools Office at NYSED, Connor LeClaire, Senior School Finance Analyst at SUNY Charter School Institute, Aaron Cochran, Deputy Executive Director of Policy and Operations at New York City DOE, and Corey Callahan, General Counsel and VP of Legal Policy at New York City Charter School Center. We hope that everyone is staying warm and safe through this recent round of wintry February weather. February, of course, is Black History Month and the association is proud to celebrate alongside you and we look forward to highlighting your schools and the ways they are that you all are observing throughout the month. We'll begin today with updates from the association and our partners, followed by Q&A. And after the Q&A, we'll have special spotlights from two schools. While the executive budget proposed by Governor Hochul is the largest in the state's history and takes important steps to address the needs of students and families, we know there's still more work to be done to ensure students, families, and schools are treated fairly and equitably. In support of those efforts to achieve excuse me, educational equity and deliver fairly on the needs of charter school students and families, the association is now is announcing its Stand Up for Ed Equity campaign. You can make your voice heard by going to the link that is being dropped in the chat. And from there, you can learn about ways to improve educational opportunities for students and send letters to, rep to your representatives to ensure a fair and equitable budget is passed. Please feel free to share the link uh, to our call to action with your school communities, colleagues, and friends. On Friday, February 11th, the New York State Assembly will be con begin conducting interviews for candidates for the Board of Regents seats to replace Regent Nan Mead of the First Judicial, Di Judicial District, Regent Susan Mittler of the Sixth Judicial District, and Ruth Turner of the Seventh Judicial District, whose terms will expire on April 1st. Last year, the interviews, which were conducted jointly with the New York State Senate, could be seen online. The interviews will be held virtually again this year. There's no announcement yet on public access to the interviews, but we are putting a link for the live legislative proceedings in the chat. We will update you as soon as we have more details. The association recognizes and applauds all the hard work and resilience that our schools have shown in ensuring the safety of your staff, students, and families, especially this past month during the Omicron surge. And many of you have been following uh, developments regarding masking regulations statewide, pending uh, state court decisions as well. We would like to remind you, all, sc all schools that have... Uh, Excuse me, we would like to remind you, remind all schools that the state's appellate courts last week upheld a permanent stay on the masking requirements currently in place. You can find a statement from Governor Hochul and I said um, on this day in the chat. As you all know, states including New Jersey, Connecticut, and California have recently announced that they are ending mask ma mandates. Governor Hochul scheduled a meeting today with education groups to discuss mask mandates. No announcement yet on any changes for you in New York, but we will continue to provide updates as they become available. The association is excited to announce the addition of two new working groups as a complement to the data working group, which has been running since the beginning of the year. On, February, excuse me, on Friday, February 18th at 10 a.m., the Operations Working Group will be launching a new session entitled The COVID Operations Reboot, Sharing Strategies for Operational Resiliency During Challenging Times. In this interactive workshop, operations leaders will discuss ways they have adapted school operations to the challenges of COVID and discuss frameworks for improvement. On Thursday, February 24th at 4 p.m., the board member working group will host its inaugural meeting focusing on strategies that board members can use to establish a solid budget, solid budget for the 22-23 school year. And of course, our data working group will be holding its February meeting on Tuesday, February 22nd at 10 a.m. We will be focusing on frameworks that center your school's data to build strategic plans and achieve goals. We will drop the links to register for all the working group meetings in the chat. Please join us for a special webinar on February 17th at 4 p.m. on preparing the federal single audit. With the effusion of ESSER COVID relief funds, many schools are now required to submit a federal single audit as part of their normal audit processes. Experts from charter school business managers and PFK O'Connor Davies 
accountants and advisors will be available to answer questions and guide schools through the process. You can register for the webinar using the link in the chat. The deadline for the uh, application for the Association's Aspiring Educators and Leaders Scholarship is April 1st. This scholarship will award five graduating seniors from association member high schools with a $1,000 award to pursue their post-secondary studies. The association is looking for scholars who have demonstrated academic success during their time at a New York State charter school, a track record of service to their school or community, and are interested in pursuing a career in education or social service. Member high schools should share the details of this scholarship, which can be found on our scholarship page, with their guidance counselors. And finally, the New York State Charter Parent Council will host its February meeting on Wednesday, February 9th at 6 p.m. That's tomorrow at 6 p.m. During this meeting, mental health and mental health, as well as important New York State budget updates for parents will be discussed. Please share the flyer, which we are dropping in the chat with your school communities, inviting them to the meeting. That's it for the updates from the association. I'll now turn it over to Janet, Connor, Corey, and Aaron for any updates that they would like to share. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I bring with me David's apologies. I, you all must know how much he really enjoys these meetings. And um, he, unfortunately, uh, in his new role at SCD, doesn't always have as much time as he used to. Um, the only thing I really have is I got a question from a charter school today, and I thought I would bring it with me. It seems kind of timely. Uh, they wanted to know, because they had a snow day, and they decided to teach remotely. It's how the car is always on them. These are these are monthly. They're really good. Yeah. Yeah. And they wanted to know how they were supposed to report that when it came to the SED monitoring system and the school closure report. And I found the memo. Of course, there's a memo. There's always a memo. Um, I just dropped it in the chat. And the, the simple answer is yes, um, you still have to report snow days that you used as remote teaching days um, on the SED monitoring report for closures. Um, that's, that's all I really have for today. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Connor. Hi everyone, thanks for having me today. Uh, a few updates from SUNY. Uh, the 2022 RFP cycle is now live. Uh, the RFP and additional information is available on our website, newyorkcharters.org. Uh, the intent to apply form is due today, uh, so if you are considering applying, please make sure to get that in today, and the uh, proposals are due on February 22nd. Uh, there are a few still outstanding ESSA fiscal, tra fiscal transparency reports uh, from charters in New York State that was due back on December 31st. Uh, so just a reminder, if you have not completed that reporting, to get that in as soon as possible. Um, it is very uh, important to get that in as it can affect your federal federal funding. Um, there is guidance on uh, NYSED's website, our website, along with uh, the Excel template that a lot of charters have used uh, to complete that reporting. Um, and if you need any help, please feel free to reach out uh, to me or Janet, regardless of your authorizer. Um, I've helped schools from, from all the authorizers complete that report. Um, so just make sure to get that in as soon as possible. Uh, John Flack is still working with charters to get all student application forms to meet requirements. Uh, so please follow up with John if you are still working on those for approvals. Uh, his email is john.flack at suny.edu and I will put that in the chat. Uh, coming up next week, the Q2 reports, uh, the financial reports are due. Uh, so just a reminder to get those in. And then on the horizon uh, will be facility reporting, which will be due in April. Um, all, the, all of the SUNY authorized charters will need to fill out the, the facility reporting questionnaire um, just to inform us and make sure we have your most current and accurate facility information. And that is all the updates from SUNY. All right, so from New York City, uh, we are continuing to go through the renewal process. Um, and moving into some New York City operations updates, uh, just a couple of quick hits, and then Corey would love to know what you have. 
Um, so for charter schools in New York City, just a reminder to please check the charter schools weekly um, for information about how to review the attendance data that you submitted to Eastern Suffolk BOCES for reporting to the state. Um, a number of schools have identified that they did not report attendance or the correct modality for numerous students, which has resulted in those students receiving few or none of the PEBT benefits that they were expecting. So we do have a process to confirm that you have submitted all the right data so that your families can get the correct amount of benefits. Um, but the deadline is tomorrow. And beyond that, we are unfortunately not going to be able to accept additional data. So um, if you haven't had a chance to take a look, if you have any questions, please reach out. We want to make sure that your families are receiving all of the benefits that they are entitled to. Secondly, a heads up, it is already time to start planning summer um, and to start discussing your fall start dates. So please watch the C Weekly in the coming weeks for a uh, survey um, to collect information about what you are thinking. Again, for schools in DOE space, we will need to review your plans um, before confirming that your space is available for the summer and the fall per your plans um, with all of the construction and other things that may be happening in the building. Secondly, um, more information will be coming this week related to the home testing kits that will be delivered prior to February break. So please watch your email for that. And those are my updates. Uh, just adding on uh, to some of the health updates, we will have, I'll put in the chat, the DOE DOH call this Friday um, with our partners at the Department of Health in New York City, as well as uh, charter school office. So please register if you have not. Um, I also wanted to make sure um, that schools who are currently offering pre-K, so you are already a pre-K provider, the DOE is having a very short window where schools that would like to have more seats, so you're already a pre-K, but maybe you only have one section, if you would like to add another section, there is going to be an opportunity to do that. You need to email the uh, Division of Early Childhood at the email address I just put in the chat. They will send you a very short survey. It is eight questions, um, just really getting you know how many seats you want. Please do this by February 18th so that you can be considered. These will be pre-K seats for the 22-23 school year if approved. So I would ask that schools not only do this, but also please let me know if you're submitting this, because we will be following this. This is something that a lot of you have asked for who are pre-K providers. And so we just want to make sure everyone is uh, aware of this opportunity, because this is the first time it has had is, it has appeared in many years. Now, Stacy, <laughs> if that was going to be your reason. I like to how Stacy believes that. <laughs> These, no, no, because that asking I, I, it, asking questions in these forums are like like Santa's I'm sorry. like to Santa. No, it's good. It's all good. Am, I am because I actually have an inspection from DEC Department of Early Childhood Education, and they're asking for all the same things as Article Forty Three. Really? And so he scheduled a date to come visit. He's looking at all the help. He gave a spreadsheet. Um, you know, it's fine. We'll do two inspections, twenty inspections, but. It's the same inspection and then some. That's and did you already get your one this year yeah. from the Department of Health? So this is like yes. the second one. Yes, and that's why I asked if no, it's replacing it or if this is just something new. I don't. That's interesting. You should go ahead. I would. Uh, I would email Jen Schumann about it. I had not heard that they were duplicating. So I wonder if you've just got the special treatment. That's good. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, and that was all for me. Okay, great. Um, so uh, I was gonna say that's an opportunity for just like there's a f single federal audit, we need a single uh, city right inspection. <laughs> all right, very good. We're gonna turn now to our uh, focus topic pre presentations. Uh, for some schools, February can be the start of their budgeting cycle as they prepare for the next school year. We're excited once again to showcase a few schools to share their reflections on a particular topic. We have two schools with us today who are going to share a little bit about how they handle the budgeting process. We asked them, what are the two to three strategies that your schools can employ to plan and execute an effective budget development process for the next school year? Our two schools will give us some insight and, tip and tips today. So I'll turn it over to Janet Klein who will introduce our first school. 
Hi, I, I'm very happy to be introducing our first school presentation today. We have with us Timberly Wilson, the Interim Executive Director of Great Oaks Charter School in New York City. She is being joined today by other members of the finance and operations team. Great Oaks currently serves 6th through 10th grade students on Manhattan's Lower East Side. Great Oaks, New York City has been in operation since 2013. And Great Oaks is built around the design principles of mastery, leadership, and community, employing an advanced project-based curriculum that develops the whole student. Uh, without further ado, I will turn it over to Sharita. Sharita. Timberly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I'm reading a script that was written for me, and I'm afraid I didn't it prove okay. it. It's okay. It's perfectly okay. So you actually um, did some of my work for me, so I get to have some, I get to reclaim some time. Um, so I am Timberly Wilson. Um, effective uh, this week, I am now the permanent executive director Um and I have some um, big shoes to fill. Um, you you name some of these things, but you know, snapshot wise. Um, we will be uh, launching our 10th grade next year. So we're close, we're close. We, um, again, you said established in 2013. We're located in the Lower East Side. Um, we currently have roughly about 310 students enrolled. Um, we do um, work towards uh, our, our, our values of mastery, leadership, and community. But one thing that it's, I want to name about our school is that we do serve, we have a a high special needs population, roughly about 37%. And so, um, you know, all of uh, what we do is centered around trying to support our students. Um, and something that's key with our school is that we do partner with AmeriCorps to make sure that we have, uh, we provide extra support, tutoring both inside and outside the classroom in ELA and uh, math. And they also provide mentorship as well. So um, we're doing a lot with what we, we can. And so at the center of all of our decisions are students. Everything that we do, uh, what drives our decisions, the basis of our uh, decision making, I think that's true to everyone on this call or we would not be <laughs> educators, students, student achievement. And so the, the key drivers of our decisions when it come to, comes to budgeting, student enrollment, obviously we know this, we have heard people funding and all of these things we consider, our staffing needs, um, the uh, academic objectives for the year, everything that we, you know, when it comes to curriculum, when it comes to all of the decisions that we make, um, the budgeting is academic objectives and um, our grant, grant revenue sources. I, I just heard, I made a note about the ESSER funds and what we need to do there. So, you know, just making sure that we uh, make the best decisions when it comes to these four key areas to uh, promote student achievement. So, what might be different from our for our school because we are so small is that we partner closely with our CMO. So the team who's um, on the call with me, uh, we meet on a regular basis. I mean, we're we're um, pretty much um, one team. And so the first thing is that we are proactive, not reactive. Like currently, you mentioned, you said February. We start. We actually started in January. <laughs> we started. Early, we started um, forecasting our budget very, very early. So we started in January. We start, you know, kind of looking at um, uh, what was the, the forecast, the, I'm sorry, the, the uh, uh, forecasted budget against our actual and start planning ahead. And we make sure that it's modular, make sure that we are matching funds uh, accordingly. We, we adopt what I coined the three C's. We collaborate, we collaborate, we communicate consistently there. I mean, I think this week we've met twice already and it's, it's constant because I need to communicate with my team at the Great Oaks Foundation of the needs on the school, but they have the expertise to make sure that we are allocating funds appropriately. So we definitely consistently work and in previous schools where I, uh, work. Uh, I was a part of the DOE at one time. We received this budget by which to work, but we didn't have a chance to have a say in it. So this is something that we, uh, I love having a team to work with. Um, the Another thing that we do, another strategy is to uh, strategically perform a SWOT analysis 
to determine our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and we use that analysis, go deep into the budget to prioritize our goals, objectives, our costs. We make sure that we separate those variable costs from the fixed costs so we can make sure that we're all allocating funds appropriately as well. And, and then we adapt. I mean, literally, we make sure that we make the shifts necessary when we find that there is that one of our, our needs um, uh, is not being served or needs to be served in a, in a different manner. So it's, it's kind of this, this cyclical process that we continue <laughs> to, to work together um, to, to build. And I would say, oh, wait, that was fast. So I had five minutes and I hope that was five. Um, I, I don't know if we have time. You can tell me, uh, Anna or the team, if we have time for any questions, but I do have Ben Chan on the, on the call, uh, Lauren Perkins, Sharita Smith, if there are any further questions. But this honestly is like a snapshot of what we do and it's, it's consistent. This is, this is, it's not magic. It's just hard work and teamwork. I now, <laughs> yes. No, I was gonna say, I think we have a minute or two per question. Okay, and I was told we had five, we had all of five minutes. So I, I made sure it was five minutes. So I'll go back here because uh, there may be some uh, questions that you have and we are we are happy to, to share. You can drop them in the chat. Um, and yeah, you can, we welcome them. I'll ask um, only because I was in a conversation with someone earlier today um, about, uh, and we were both reflecting on the importance of financial transparency um, within a school, right? And I think particularly now, my observation would be that there is potential, potentially a misperception that you somewhere have like a school Scrooge McDuck vault of money that like, you know, when you're like, I need a minute, you're just like swimming in that money. Um, and at the same time, um, teachers and school staff's lives have never been more difficult. Um, and the implications that that has for retention and hiring, which is also something that people are struggling with. And so just sort of the tangled knot of all of those cause and effect type things. So just um, love your three C's approach and curious if um, there are specific activities that you found to be particularly impactful in the current context. I think that's the right question. I think it's 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 large. Um, I'll give you my sense, and I welcome you know Ben or Lauren to share. I think from my uh, perspective as a school leader, um, ooh, I think it's doing a, a really close or deep dive like analysis of in regard to transparency transparency around how what how we're spending our money i'll give an example so recently um i had our director of data and uh, analytics kind of dive into our let's say credit card spending for example and that's something for example that that we use our credit card sometimes for staff appreciation for student incentives like you know and I wanted to make sure that we can continue to your point to support teachers, support students, but also be mindful of our spending uh, for our non-personnel funds. And so it's been helpful to really, when I say dive deep, I mean, I literally know percentage wise where our money is going, how much we're spending on food, how much we're spending on Uber, how, you know, really getting granular about our spending and, and, and being honest when we have to actually pull back. And so um, at the school level, we do have regular meetings, uh, leadership meetings where I say, okay, we have to pull back and we make that transparent, but also sharing that information with our finance team. So that if we need to make certain uh, really tough, we need to cut back and make certain decisions we do. And so it's, for me, it's been getting granular about our funds and like really tracking what we're spending. Um, because I do, I want to do some other, some, some things that are really exciting for students and, and uh, staff at the end of the year. So I don't want to overspend 
you know, that's just one example, but it's like, it's at the school level, it's at the, you know, foundation level that, you know, that, that, that detail has helped me to make decisions. Ben and Lauren, I don't know if you have some insight that you'd like to share. Um, I'll just add three things, you know, just plan, prioritize, plan, and structure, and then, um, and then repeat. Because uh, communication of your different priorities uh, only helps if there's communication, you know, the three C's that Timberley had, um, and agreement across the board. Okay. And you just give them a tour of the Scrooge McDuck swimming, swimming section. No. <laughs> I, I, you know, and I, I apologize, I didn't say this. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. I do think on behalf of Great Oaks Next City, I thank you for just giving us uh, an opportunity to share. Again, I think what we shared may not be very different than what some of us do collectively. Um, it depends on your school. We happen to be small and, and uh, we're growing, but uh, I really I value our team and I really appreciate being able to work so closely, you know, with them and to make decisions together. So thank you for the opportunity to share. We really appreciate it and hope you found something, you, you know, helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. Now um, I'll turn it over to Connor to uh, introduce the next school. Thank you. Thank you, Amika. Uh, for our next presentation, I'm very happy to introduce Marilyn Callow, the Chief Executive Officer, and Scott Quintero, the Chief Financial Officer for Family Life Academy Charter Schools, um, also known as FLAX. Uh, FLAX is located in the Bronx and currently serves over 1,500 scholars in grades K to eight across its three operating charters. FLAX will also build upon its successful K to eight programs with a fourth charter, Family Life Academy Charter Schools High School, serving high school grades nine to 12. As the name suggests, FLAX creates a nurturing and supportive environment for each of its students and their families intending to develop their knowledge, skills, and enthusiasm for lifelong learners. So now I will hand it off to, and I'm very happy to introduce Marilyn and Scott. Thank, thank you, um, Connor, and, um, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting us. Um, we're, we call ourselves a community grown charter schools network. Um, yes, we're in the Bronx and our school was birthed um, due to the outcry of the families 22 years ago. Um, and certainly, We've had our valleys and mountaintop moments when dealing with budgets. And I will say, so it was interesting for us as we were preparing for this because I said, oh goodness, you know, but we wanna just give you how we, we do certain things in our school and share that with you. Um, and we have to say that um, when I came 19 years, I'm gonna complete my 19th year, and um, I came from the DOE, you know, so I always got my paycheck no matter what. So, um, and some of what we now have in place deals with some of what I experienced in the beginning. So our school, you know, we came from the grassroots. We didn't have major funders or anything like that. We just had what we had gotten in the beginning. And so I come in and we have deficit and I never forget when the CFO came and said to me, um, we need to speak because we may not be able to pay the staff. And I was like, I just could not comprehend that. That was like not in my scope of understanding. And so, um, of course, we did all kinds of things to rectify what we had to rectify. But what it, what it did for us, uh, was that certainly we came up with, okay, moving forward, how are we going to operate in terms of our, our budget and our money and the money that's coming in? And at that time, we did not have any major funders um, or, or any major money coming in except our per pupil and any uh, government uh, funding that was coming in and, and maybe one, one uh, small um, 
uh, um, grant that we had gotten. And so what did we come up with? We started to look at what is our mission and who we are uh, as, a, as, a net, uh, as a school, started then as a school, now we're a network. And what was the vision uh, that started the whole the school and, and what, who are we and what are we about? And we are about ensuring that the children in our community, the community that we serve, um, are able to succeed, succeed at a high level, and um, they're able to come back to their communities or wherever community they're in to come back and support that community um, and do exceedingly well in all things. And so we, we said everything that we do, including our budget, needs to constantly look at the vision and the mission of our school and who we are. And so that drives everything and it drives our budget because it's almost like we come back to it. So let's look again at our, our mission. This is what we're doing. Is this in alignment with our mission? And, and that's the way we think of the budget when we're, we, we're working with it and doing the things. And Scott will uh, really give you a lot more, but I wanted to share that we come, we're very strong on the vision and mission. Everyone in our network, including Scott, must speak to his entire team about the vision and the mission and, and speak about it in depth. Every year, every single person in our school, except that the pandemic has caused a little problem, um, but we speak to the entire network. That, that means our uh, all, uh, all staff and faculty, everyone from custodial staff to the teaching and instructional and the leaders in the schools about what the vision is. We go over it, we review it, and then we talk about our mission. And we tell them everything has to come from there. So the finance team itself um, is a part of everything we do. So Scott, you know, in the beginning, I know that it was different for, and for the finance team, but they are invited to professional development. Um, not just invited, we tell them, look, we want you to go here. We want you to listen to this. We want you to, so they'll go in for curriculum planning, for meetings that the staff is, uh, that the principals are having with their teams at the schools. Um, they'll go in at, to parent meetings, listen to the parents. That way they get us, our culture, who we are, what it's about. And so when they're thinking about the budget and the finances, that is in their mind. So we are very clear and very strong about this. Um, our finance team works very closely with the instructional leaders. Uh, Scott meets on a monthly basis with each and every principal and with the heads of our departments. There's conversations about what's happening, how's it, so that that way when decisions are being made about the budget, he already knows what's going on. And then if we're not able to really uh, get certain things or whatever, there are other ways of thinking about it and maybe other parts can happen and not you know, other areas. So, we, um, so he meets with the leaders, he meets with the finance committee at the board, we meet he meets with the ops team uh, weekly and with the executive leadership weekly. We are having meetings, conversations um, about the schools and about the finance and how that is all integrated. And our budget, one of the things, because of that experience I had when I came on, um, one of the things that I shared very clearly and when Scott came on, it was, this is the way we need to operate. We can, we have to budget, and I know people don't like this word, but we have to have a conservative budget that basically relies mainly on the public funds, the per pupil and the government funding. Don't get me wrong. I have other um, strings of uh, funds that are coming in through big grants that we have gotten and some foundations and that, but we have to be able to budget so that we're able to do what we need to do for all our children and to ensure that their success and that they um, 
uh, really reach the goals that they have and beyond us um, because of the experience that they've had in our schools and that the, the budget and the funding should not impact what we do. So, and we wanna make sure that we don't say, oh my goodness, if we don't get this money from a funder, we're not gonna be able to survive, no. So we budget very conservatively and, um, but yes, we have gotten a lot more, a lot of money from the US Department of Education and others. But right now um, I'm gonna have Scott really share what are all the different things that we do, but I wanted to just kind of tell you what our key philosophy is, because we're kind of very strong uh, on everything we do and especially um, our finances. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Ms. Callow. Um, first thing, revenue, expenses, expenses, revenue, which is more important. Uh, obviously, each one is very important for a budget. So which drives the budget? Both. So we have to, before we start, we assess the needs versus the wants. How do I do that? As Ms. Callow said, I meet with all of Flax members, executive team, principals, constant communication, similar as to what Timberly said. It's all about mm -hmm. communication. How do I find out information? Why do I find out information is to be able to fund everything. So then I understand what we're trying to do. So it's not about money. It's about what we're trying to do. What's our vision? Again, we look at three words, students, students, students. Everything we do is to support the FLAC scholars and the students. So again, we, I meet with the um, executive staff and the principals, understanding what they want to do versus what they need to do. Again, needs and wants uh, are two separate things. So once I get a feel of that, we look at past history. Again, past history is how do we budget last year, the year before, the year before that? We look at the actual financial results. Do we over budget? Do we under budget? Um, so we look at the past history to find out what we're trying to do. Every year, obviously, is different. Again, as part of my meeting with the um, staff, I might hear we need another instructional coach. So I won't say, well, that doesn't make sense because I'm part of all the meetings. It makes sense to me. So at some point, I'm like, okay, I have to put aside more money at some point. So the fun part, developing various budget scenarios. What do I mean by that? Again, we always, look, now I'm um, looking at revenue. How many students do we currently have? How many students do we think we're going to have next year? So we can, so I have various budgets. One is 100% of what our chartered enrollment number is. I have that number, I look at expenses, and I have my first budget. Am I done? Absolutely not. That's the start of, of everything. Then I start stre excuse me, stressing the budget. If we only took 98% of those kids or 97%, then I start playing with the revenue, lowering the revenue until I have a negative budget. Then if I have a negative budget, then I go back to the expenses and then I work it back and forth. So I think that's the fun part of the budget, the hard part as well. Again, a budget is nothing more than the activity of balancing revenue and expenses. But I think it's all about communication. We start the budget process October. I'm always looking forward, backwards, and today. So on a given day, I can look at next year's budget, the current budget, and what we did last year. But it's all about communication within each other. So that's basically what I want to say. So um, I'll give it back to Ms. Callow if she wants to um, end or we can go to Q and A. I think Q and A is fine. If folks have questions on the budgeting topics or on anything else, um, we did sort of roll right into this topic. And so if folks had questions from the updates or anything else, um, now would be a great time. But thank you um, to the schools, really, um, really appreciate it. I think 
on the observations about consistency and engagement and communication transparency. They're all really key. And as a former COO, it warms the cockles of my heart to have someone talk about um, fully incorporating their financial manager into conversations early and often, because um, that is definitely always a, a complexity in my experience, often a complexity. Okay. Well, if there aren't any questions um, for the schools or in general, we'll look forward to seeing you all next month. Um, we are going to have um, some additional special guests next month that we can't even tell you about until next week. So be on the lookout um, for an announcement next week. It's embargoed, embargoed, embargoed. Um, and uh, oh, and I see Yomika's off mute. I didn't mean to steal, steal your closeout thunder. I'll hand it back to Yomika. No problem. No problem. Um, I just want to say again, well, thank you. Thank you to the school. Thank you, Marilyn, Timberly. Thank you, Scott, Lauren. Um, this was wonderful. Uh, and we will do it again uh, next month, as Anna said. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. As always, please, we will post uh, today's recording in the Resource Center on our website. Uh, please reach out if you have any questions about these, this topic that was discussed today or interested in having your school present on any of our monthly uh, webinars the monthly webinars as all our work is made possible through the contribution and commitment of our member schools. We thank you. We appreciate the ability to host these forums for the full New York Charter School community. If you are not a member of the association, we encourage you to join today by emailing membership at nycharters.net. And if there are no more questions, um, well, we'll see you next time and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.